I'm generally not unintelligent, except when it involves understanding women. It's a common dilemma, isn't it? Most men struggle with comprehending women. Some believe they have it figured out, but do they really? I doubt it. Like many men, I try to navigate through, doing my best to get things right. However, it dawned on me much later that I'm particularly clueless when it comes to women, especially my wife. I noticed signs of her disrespect and infidelity for almost five months before realizing that where there's smoke, there's fire. We married quickly, swept up in passion, as the song goes, we got married in a fever hotter than a pepper sprout. I met, courted, and married Catherine within a year during college. At Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, my supposed focus was on hotel and restaurant management, though I spent more time partying than studying. During that time, I worked at Eskimo Joe's, a popular college hangout, as a bouncer. The job involved rotating through various posts, from checking IDs at the doors to monitoring the crowd to prevent trouble. My perch near the stairs gave me a vantage point over the bar below, where I observed women manipulating naive men. Some women jibbled multiple suitors, exploiting them for drinks and possible late-night rendezvous. Many would vanish just before closing time, angering the men they had duped. I learned to identify these patterns and occasionally warn my friends or sympathetic strangers about certain women, while others I allowed to fall victim to their own naivety. One Saturday evening after a home game, I was on duty at Eskimo Joe's, watching the usual antics of drunken patrons, when a stunning woman practically stumbled into my arms. Drunk didn't begin to describe her, she was completely wasted and disoriented, claiming not to know where she was. She couldn't find her supposed friends, which didn't surprise me. Those girls were notorious for sneaking out the back after enjoying free drinks all night. By then, they were long gone, they always slipped away right after last call. Just as Catherine was draped over me, the man who had been buying her drinks approached. He shot me a hostile look and grabbed her arm. Come on, Callie, he insisted. Let's get out of here. I thought you ditched me. It was then that I learned her name was Catherine. I was about to let her go with him when she stirred and gave him a puzzled look. I'm not Callie, I'm Catherine. Who are you? Why do I have to go with you? Where are Cindy and the others? They were supposed to leave with me when the bar closed. He tugged at her arm again. Callie, Catherine, whatever. I've been buying you drinks all night. You're coming home with me now. Catherine shook off her stupor once more and tried to stand, pulling away from him. She looked frightened as she firmly stated, No, I don't know you, and I don't want to go with you. Leave me alone. He persisted, and she resisted. Seeing she genuinely didn't want to leave with him and didn't know him, I intervened, guiding her toward a chair and stepping between them. Hold up, buddy, I said calmly. Looks like the lady isn't interested. Why don't you just walk away like she asked, before things get messy? A flash of anger crossed his face, and he shoved me. Back off, asshole. She's coming with me, and we're leaving. Drop it if you know what's good for you. I backed off slightly, then swiftly grabbed his arm and pinned it behind his back with a twist. He let out a cry of pain just as another bouncer approached. Got a problem here, Dave? Nope, I replied, keeping my hold on the guy's arm. He wanted her to go with him, but she wasn't having it. He didn't take no for an answer, but I think he gets it now, right? I applied a bit more pressure, causing him to yelp again. Ow, yeah, I got it. Just let me go, asshole. I escorted the man to the door and out onto the sidewalk, giving him a gentle push. All right, beat it. We've got your face on camera now, so if there's any more trouble from you, we'll have to involve security next time. Returning inside, I found a group of waitresses gathered around Catherine, who had passed out in the chair. Damn, I thought to myself, wondering what to do next. Patty approached me, saying, Dave, Catherine lives in my dorm. If you help me get her back and into her room, I can take care of her from there. So that's what I did, and that's how I earned Catherine's gratitude. The following weekend, as I worked Friday night, the beautiful woman approached me, embraced me tightly, and planted a long, sloppy kiss on my lips. Surprised, I pushed her back gently, asking, Whoa, what's all this about? 
You saved me last Saturday, she exclaimed. Patty told me how you stopped that guy from taking me home, then you drove us back to the dorm and helped her get me into my room. I don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been there for me. My so-called friends ditched me with the drink and dash trick, leaving me behind. I didn't even hear the last call. From then on, whenever I worked, Catherine stuck close to me for protection. We grew close and started dating a few months later. After graduation, we got married. Catherine enjoys the finer things in life, partying, dancing, good food, and fine wine. Luckily, with good jobs and no children, we can afford most of it, although sometimes she gets frustrated when I remind her to wait until payday for a night out. Many of our money arguments stem from the fact that my parents are well off. They own a large farm store and extensive farmland back in our hometown, complete with a fishing and hunting resort. Catherine often suggests I take a management position with my dad to earn more money and prestige quickly. However, I've repeatedly explained that I'm here to gain real-world experience and learn from seasoned professionals before eventually taking over the resort in a few years when the current manager retires. Catherine, however, wishes it could happen faster and often expresses her discontent about it. I started receiving mocking remarks about my ability to financially support our household. Occasionally, Catherine would go out with her friends after work and return home heavily intoxicated. For months, I had to either pick her up or pay for a cab. However, about five months ago, all of that suddenly stopped. She still came home drunk, and I often had to accompany her to retrieve her car from her office or her favorite bar the next day, but at least I wasn't paying for cabs or rescuing her anymore. Sometimes, I would discover her asleep on the living room floor in the morning, wondering how she managed to get inside if she passed out there. After numerous arguments, I finally decided to investigate what was really happening. Like many men in similar situations, I purchased recorders and discreetly placed them in Catherine's purse, car, and even under her desk in her office. I tapped our landline and acquired the necessary equipment to intercept her cell phone calls. What I discovered shattered my love for her. Catherine had begun a sexual relationship with a colleague from her workplace. Many of her late nights and weekend shopping trips with her friends over the past five months had actually been rendezvous with Gregory Anders. He was one of those obnoxious salesmen, a smarmy, arrogant man who ingratiated himself with his superiors. His only redeeming quality, or perhaps not, was that he was the highest paid salesman in her company and his father owned the company. From the recordings, I pieced together two things. When I cut back on our lavish dining experiences, entertainment, fine wines, and expensive outings, Catherine complained loudly at work about feeling mistreated. Gregory seized on her dissatisfaction and began joining the women on their outings. He flaunted his wealth, bought them drinks, and showed them a luxurious lifestyle until Catherine became interested. Then he started inviting her to expensive bistros for lunch and lavish dinners after work. After a few weeks, Catherine succumbed to his advances and began sleeping with him. He started giving her orders, which shocked me deeply. All he had to do was threaten to stop his financial generosity, and she would comply with his demands, whether it was performing sexual acts in public places or adhering to his strict schedule about when they could be intimate. I even heard recordings of him instructing her to ensure there was at least a 24-hour gap between having sex with me and being with him, insisting he wouldn't accept sloppy seconds. Our sex life quickly deteriorated, revolving around Gregory's out-of-town sales trips and Sundays, the only days he wasn't with Catherine. After discovering her affair, my feelings for her dwindled, and I only kept her around while planning for divorce. Fortunately, we hadn't been married long, only 27 months, and had no children. We were living comfortably in a nice condo and had two new vehicles, including her beloved BMW, while I cherished my trusty 2010 F-150 Super Crew 4x4, bought new after college. Kate, as she hates being called now, refused to ride in my damn old truck, insisting on driving her car whenever we went out, which was increasingly rare. I played along to keep her in the dark. Today marks the beginning of my revenge on Kate and Greg. She has a date with him tonight, supposedly meeting at the mall at 6.30 p.m. for drinks, dinner at a new French restaurant, and dancing, under the guise of attending a baby shower with her friends. Kate emerged from the shower at 5.30 p.m., getting ready to leave by 6. I waited in the hallway near our bedroom until she was about to step out. 
I entered abruptly, enveloping her in my arms and kissing her. Damn it, Dave, stop, she protested. I have to meet the girls at 6.30. I don't have time for this, and you'll mess up my makeup. I'm sorry, honey, I replied, feigning desire. I just need you so badly. How about a quickie now and a longer session when you get back? No, Dave. I don't have time, she insisted. I gently pushed her until she bumped against the edge of the bed. I knew she was wearing thigh-high stockings and bikini panties. As she fell back, I positioned myself over her, already aroused and prepared. I had oiled myself in anticipation, though it turned out unnecessary. She was wetter than she had been with me in ages, likely eager to see her lover. Guiding myself with one hand, I entered her swiftly. I paused, relishing the moment, before beginning a deliberate, varied rhythm. I took my time, ensuring she responded before climaxing, withholding my release until I couldn't hold back any longer, releasing everything into her. It had been a week since my last sexual encounter, and I needed the release, ensuring she received a full load. I kissed her and pulled away. She began yelling about her ruined makeup and feeling dirty. She rushed towards the bathroom, but I intercepted her, guiding her towards the door and down the hallway. Passing by the table where she kept her purse, I picked it up and handed it to her. Sorry for taking so long, honey, I said calmly. I really needed that though. Here's your purse. Hurry up, you can still make it and not be too late. Tell the girls I said hi. You can blame me for making you late. Tell them I apologize. But I need to clean up. I can't go out like this. No, you look fine, honey. This won't be the first time you've been out all evening with come inside you. Remember? No one will ever know. Now go and have fun, babe. Catherine glared at me and headed towards her car. I suppressed a laugh and sat up, eagerly awaiting the recordings to see how Greg reacted to his surprise. Man, was he furious with Kate. I heard their passionate kissing and moaning when they entered his condo. There was a lot of movement, and then I heard Kate's voice, Greg, honey, I'm sorry, but Dave made me make love to him before I left. Let me clean up before we go to bed. What? I told you not to let that asshole touch my pussy when I was going to be with you. There was a loud slap, and Kate screamed. Now get your ass to the bathroom and clean up. I better not find any cum in there. And forget about getting your pussy eaten before we fuck. I couldn't hear much more because Kate had left her purse in the living room and they moved to the bedroom. Still, I felt satisfied inside. I had managed to upset Greg and maybe even gotten Kate slapped, judging by her scream. The next times I knew Kate would be with Greg, I made sure to have sex with her. Every time she left home, I tried to leave my mark inside her, just in case she was really seeing Greg instead of doing whatever innocent thing she claimed. Greg grew angrier as Kate repeatedly came to him with a pussy full of sperm. He called her names and degraded her. Almost every time, she ended up crying before he took her roughly. It was satisfying to see her leave home afraid of Greg, only to endure his harsh treatment and more tears. I suspected he never hit her again after that first slap on the ass. The last encounter with Greg was particularly bad. I had enough evidence for my revenge and decided it was time to end it. I arranged for her to be served divorce papers during their Saturday rendezvous. I even shared the recordings and pictures I had with Greg's wife. There were no explicit photos of them having sex, just images of them dining, dancing, and making out in his car. It was damning enough. In a couple of photos, Kate's breasts were exposed, and her legs were spread enough to reveal Greg's fingers and her pussy. There were also two photos of her performing oral sex on him while he drove. I paid extra to ensure Kate was served with divorce papers after she arrived with Greg at his father's company condo in the city. It was a place used for such affairs by Greg and his father. I didn't stop there. I also sent Greg's mother pictures of his father and his secretary fooling around. Why not spread the goodwill? The process server met Greg and Kate in the condo lobby. After serving Kate, he handed Greg the letter I had prepared. Addressing Greg, the process server said, I have been instructed to give you this letter, Mr. Anders. 
Mr. Stevens has detailed his actions for you, explaining what has been going on in the last few months and what you can expect upon your return home. In the letter, I outlined the evidence I had gathered against Greg and Kate, which I had also shared with his mother and wife. I taunted him about enjoying my leavings from Kate, ensuring that every time she visited him, a part of me was also there to keep him company. Greg's reaction was extreme. He ended up hitting Kate in a fit of rage. Security intervened, restraining Greg and calling for police and an ambulance for Kate. Hearing about this, I felt a pang of guilt. I wanted to hurt Kate emotionally, not physically. I hadn't anticipated Greg would resort to violence. An hour later, the hospital called, requesting me to come down to complete paperwork and take Kate home. I chuckled, informing them, sorry, ma'am, I can't do that. Kate and I are getting divorced, and she doesn't live with me. You should call her lover to pick her up. Oh, I see. Can you please provide his name? I gave her Greg's name and phone number. After a pause, she hesitated, saying, Sir, I'm sorry, but I can't contact Mr. Anders. Your wife is in the emergency room because Mr. Anders assaulted her severely tonight. I believe he is in custody now. All right. Here are two more phone numbers. Maybe one of them can assist. I provided Kate's parents' numbers and one of her best friend's contact information. I never found out who picked her up. I didn't hear from her for nearly four days. Then, on Wednesday evening, leaving work, I found Kate waiting by my truck. As soon as she saw me, she got out of her car and approached slowly. Tears filled Kate's eyes as she stood before me. David, honey, she pleaded. Can we please talk about this? Please? No, Kate. There's not much left to say. You cheated. I caught you. We're getting a divorce. End of story. But I don't want a divorce, Dave. Can't we work through this? I have nowhere else to go. Please, I need to come home, Dave. I promise I'll be better if you just let me come home and make it up to you. Nope, it's not going to happen, babe. I heard Greg had to move into your little love nest. Why don't you move in with him and his daddy? I bet they would be glad to take care of you. I walked around Kate and got into my truck. As I closed the door, she was standing there, crying. She hadn't moved by the time I drove out of sight. Now here's another thing I didn't understand about women. Kate was working full-time and making almost $36,000 a year. Why didn't she have enough to rent a place like I had? Why did she move into that damn condo with Greg and his father? I don't know. But what I gathered from the police report is that Greg and his father beat her so badly she died after three days in the hospital. She had apparently angered them when she refused to engage in certain activities. She believed she was Greg's lover and that they would marry after the divorce, according to the statement she gave the police before she died. Now I really feel like shit. Kate destroyed our marriage chasing after a better life. And my stupid revenge killed Kate. I looked up and said, bartender, give me another one. I need to forget this shit. Everything was spinning, and I felt like I was floating, then reality hit me hard. There were dozens of people standing over me. I was looking up at the short skirt of a woman. She was looking down at me, shocked. She dropped to her knees beside me. David, is that really you? What the hell are you doing so drunk you fall off your bar stool? Patty? Yes, Dave. I'd ask how you've been, but I don't think you're in any condition to tell me. Come on, let's get you up and see if we can sober you up a bit. Patty and one of the bouncers helped me to her booth. She gave me coffee. I rushed to the restroom twice to rid myself of the coffee and most of my guts. Thank God I don't have to clean up after myself. After a couple of hours, I could at least talk without much difficulty. Patty demanded to know why I was there so drunk. I told her the whole story you just read and said, so you see, Patty, I killed her. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I hated her for what she did to me, but I didn't want her dead. Patty sat there in shock, staring at me with her mouth open. Finally, she wrapped her arm around me and gave me a hug. Dave, some of what you did was pretty despicable, but you didn't kill her. That asshole Greg killed her. You couldn't have known he would do that. 
Patty sat silently for a moment, staring into the distance. Then she spoke, her voice tinged with regret. You know, Dave, some of this is my fault too. I'm sorry I never told you about Catherine when we were in college. Even after you started dating, she had a thing for guys. If they had money, or even just a little, and were willing to spend it on her, she'd lead them on. A lot of nights when she wasn't with you at Joe's, she was out with some guy with deep pockets. How do you think she afforded those expensive clothes? I didn't tell you because you weren't exclusive then, and honestly, I didn't think you'd fall for her line and marry her. You worked at Joe's, you knew the type of women there. I figured you were just after her for sex like the others. So, in a way, I'm guilty too. I sat quietly, absorbing Patty's words. Even in college, huh? Damn, I just don't get women sometimes. I thought we had something good. Dave, don't paint all women with the same brush, Patty responded gently. A lot of us aren't like that, you know. If you judged all women by those standards, I'd have to run from you thinking all men are like Gregory, right? I know that's not true. I worked with you for two years. I know the kind of man you are. How many times did you take home and take care of women who were so drunk they could have been in danger? Dave, you just need to understand that women are like men in some ways. There are good, honorable ones out there, and there are players, just like men. We might reason differently and think with our emotions more, but that's not too hard to understand, is it? Patty smiled and gently tugged at my arm. Come on, Dave. Let me get you home. By the way, where do you live? If you're really interested in understanding women better once all of this settles down, I'll give you some lessons. Deal? Thanks for watching and have a great day. Write your opinion in the comments.